Canada is quickly taking a massive cultural nosedive. At one point, I made a video called The Hilarious State of Canada Right Now. Here's an update into what's happening in Canada right now. Today, it's kind of not funny anymore. <laughs> From coast to coast, stupidity is now reigning supreme. Fake native tribes are protesting pipelines and railroads all across the country, putting a halt to industry that would employ thousands of people. Teachers unions are unilaterally striking across the province of Ontario because their raises are being cut by just 1%. And on the east coast, a convicted terrorist is giving paid speaking events. I'm actually not kidding about any of this. You made my heart break. You Right now, the federal government is trying to build a natural gas pipeline across the entire country, which they purchased the rights to using billions of taxpayer dollars. But a fake native tribe is actually halting construction by performing illegal protests across the country. They're not fake natives. Calm down, everyone. Just calm down. A lot of people don't know that all the tribes who represent the land where the pipeline is being built on have approved the project. Some have even held referendums on that very topic to get this approved. But according to some people, their elected leaders aren't the true voices of the tribes. The Office of the Wet'suwet'en has a nice website that makes it look like an officially recognized tribe. However, on their about page, they even say they're a not-for-profit organization made up of hereditary chiefs. So what does that mean? Just ask this scientician. Uh... It means that social justice warriors, protesters, and a majority of the mainstream media all side with a not-for-profit organization of a couple hundred people who uses foreign donations to fund their illegal protests. My life is nothing but a comedy. They're literally siding with a bunch of people who just claim that they're the actual leaders of a native tribe, instead of all the other people that are actually duly elected into leadership in all the other tribes. Supporting free elections that have been used for a couple hundred years instead of people who claim power as their birthright? Hmm, that's racist. Oh, so progressive. But that's not quite progressive enough. I think we can do better. How about giving a convicted terrorist money to do paid speeches that the government already gave $10 million to before? Now that's progressive, isn't it? Former teenage bomb maker Omar Khadr, who has never apologized for killing an American soldier, was recently paid to speak at Dalhousie University on a panel on how to prevent child soldiers. Sorry, but that's really woke. Ezra Levant from Rebel News even tried to ask Khadr questions at an airport a couple days before his stunning and brave speech, only to have police threaten to arrest him for harassment. See, this is exactly what we figured would happen. Why don't we go ahead and well, but, walk away yeah. from but why don't you, things that are hurtful? Why don't you, but how, but aren't you on the no-fly list? This is an officer, he's harassing this is a not harassing anybody. Harassing. That's a convicted Al-Qaeda terrorist right there who just flew on an airplane. You're very close to being arrested, you understand me? And you're very close to getting a civil lawsuit. Who was it, whose safety was in breach there? Everyone's safety, sir. You're a goddamn liar and you know it. You're a disgrace to that badge and you're a disgrace. I'm proud of what I do, sir. You're proud of defending a terrorist? Former Canadian soldiers who actually fought in a war against them showed up to the event to ask questions. They were kicked out. Oh, uh, yeah, my name's Jeremy McKenzie. I'm a Canadian Forces Afghanistan combat veteran. I deployed the 2nd Battalion Royal Canadian Regiment in 2007 um, to fight these people, actually, to fight Omar Khadr's extended family. They're all participate. They love the Taliban. The Taliban terrorist, a multimillionaire. And we're going to tell everybody that's got a problem with that to leave the building and, and leave the premises. Hey, you guys, don't be mean to the terrorists, okay? That's not nice. The province of Ontario, who is massively in debt, elected a government that ran on the idea of budget cuts to balance the budget. This has resulted in teachers unions protesting the cuts. Keep in mind, however, these very same teachers average a salary of almost $90,000 a year. But if you ask the teachers who are protesting, it's not about money, it's not about raises at all. It's about the children that we care about. Tell me, so what is the main issue? Is it the 2% salary increase? Oh, that has nothing to do with it. Oh, really? It's not about our salary at all. If you're going to increase our salary, that's not even going to make a difference on our paycheck. It has nothing to do with the money that we're earning. It has to do with the students. It's always been about the students. Well, if it's about the students, shouldn't you be in class teaching them right now? I don't think it's uh, uh, unreasonable for workers to ask for just basically cost of living increase. Can I ask you what brings you out here? Class sizes. Too big. Too big? Way too big. Is that the only issue or is there the 2% salary increase? No, it has nothing to do with the salary. There's one small problem with that though. The teachers union president actually admits it's about money. The union has asked for a cost of living increase around 2% per year, resulting in 
around $200 million per year, which the government says will eventually cost $1.5 billion in total from wage and benefits increases. So what are these heinous demands that the government is asking that's causing all these teachers to protest? Well, they're daring to say that they want to decrease teachers' raises from 2% to 1% to match all other government employee raises. Those monsters. It's kind of weird though that the teachers union somehow manages to scrounge up all this money for commercials and print advertisements. All just so that they can tell you. Won't somebody please think of the children? They're against increased class sizes by as little as three students and they're against any sort of online learning for the students as well. Obviously because that means fewer teachers. The problem is that there's already so many teachers, a massive work pool of people, that it's almost impossible for any new teachers to get a job. Yet somehow, with all these people going for the same job, they manage to average massive salaries. I'm no economist, but something seems a little bit off about that. I didn't say a boot. It's almost as if there's been consistent raises over the years, and as soon as they don't get their way and everybody doesn't just do whatever they say, they throw a fit and protest over and over again. Am I so out of touch? No. It's the children who are wrong. Something has to give. Canada's fake reaction to everything and poor news coverage on topics that actually matter to people is costing people jobs and money. Now, where's Justin Trudeau in all this, you ask? Our feminist prime minister is on a tour to get a UN seat currently, including walking arm in arm with the leader of Senegal, where it's illegal to be gay, and coddling to Iran. Now, is doing this in Senegal and Africa just the cost of doing business? Of course it is. But you call yourself a feminist prime minister and you're walking arm in arm in a country where they jail people for being gay. Well, as for Iran, that's kind of understandable. They haven't done anything to us. Except for that airplane full of our people that they shot down? Like, <laughs> Don't forget to visit my Patreon page. It's only $1 per month to help me build a better igloo. It's been a rough few weeks, Murray. <laughs>